Good afternoon, everybody. This is Eric with American Business Systems welcoming you to another Wednesday webinar with us. Uh, we look forward to uh, spending the next hour with you. Today, we're going to be talking with you mistakes to avoid when starting a new business. I'm going to just introduce to you real quickly American Business Systems. Obviously, for those that have been on the webinars in the past, you know that we've been around for a little bit of time. Uh, we've been here for 26 years, and so we're looking for another uh, 25, 50, 60, 70 years ahead of us here because uh, I don't think medical is going away at all. Healthcare is going to be around for a very long time. So anyway, we just wanted to uh, share with you about that. Again, my name is Eric Oje. Again, been with ABS for a little over 12 years and 12 and a half years already, if you can believe that. Uh, so I appreciate being a part of this family here. We are putting in to the, uh, to the uh, handouts over there, the slide deck. So you're gonna wanna pick that up and, and have that with you. And folks, we've helped pe people from all over this country, all different backgrounds, all different ages, all different nationalities. We are here to help you get your business up and going as best as we can. And it's all based upon utilizing a complete 100% cloud-based type system. So you'll see that here, and we're gonna be talking about that as we go through this afternoon. So let me now introduce you to my co-host. Some of you know who he is, it's Patrick Phillips. He is the founder and the CEO of American Business Systems. He is a great author, has written some books here that we're gonna be talking about throughout today's program. Uh, he's also a contributing uh, editor for the Billing and Coding Advantage magazine out there. He's also the co-founder of the Medical Revenue Managers of As uh, Association of America. And folks, without any further ado, let's get Patrick on here because we've got a lot to cover this afternoon. So Patrick, if you're there, there he is. Thanks for joining us this afternoon, Patrick. Uh, Eric is acting like everything is just fine. He's such a professional that he, he can't imagine that th there was a disaster happening right before this thing kicked off and he got he got everything fixed. So thank you, Eric. <laughs> I'm the nick of time. I mean, folks, we, you talk about uh, uh, the real realness of uh, media and going live and going broadcasting out here. Sometimes it's right up to the very minute. So yes, thanks, Patrick. I appreciate that. Oh, well, this is a good one uh, today because, folks, there's a lot of mistakes you could make. If you're thinking about starting your own business, believe me, there's a lot of choices out there that you just would not want to make. Uh, and I'm going to tell you today, uh, with Eric's help, some of the mistakes that you could find out there uh, trying to look for a business. One of them is, you know, just spending time and money on technical aspects. Eric, what does that got to do with? Well, you mentioned just now that we have a fully cloud-based system. So yeah. why don't we tell them about that? Yeah, let's talk Let's talk about that real quickly. But first of all, remember folks, the, the place where you put in uh, that you can hear me, the question box area, that's where you can ask us questions. And we'll be more than happy to see what we can do to help answer some of your questions as we go through this afternoon. And yeah, Patrick, uh, you know, when we're talking about different mistakes, these are the mistakes that people spend a lot of time doing. And what we've seen here with folks that are kind of coming around, kind of kicking the tires here, they spend a lot of time on the, and money on trying to figure out, can they do this? Uh, do they need to get educated? Do they need to go to a school? Do they need to become a coder? And, and then then the, the technical side of it, you know, Although all of that is important, Patrick, you know, for 26 years, we would not still be here if that's all that we focused on. But yeah. one of the things that we see out there is this server-based type system. Uh, why don't you talk about that real quickly? Because we get to get, we're going to move from here to really where we are in the 21st century right here. Yeah, you know, folks, there, the, there, there's an old uh model out there that if you're talking to other companies, in fact, I think Eric, we're showing the screenshot of another piece of software that's not ours. That's an old Windows based software, but it illustrates folks that what you do is you prepare the claim on your computer and then you're connecting yourself at some point, maybe at the end of the day to a clearinghouse. A clearinghouse is just a third party uh, company that basically scrubs the claim clean, make sure that it's doesn't have any major mistakes in it. 
And then they forward that on to the insurance companies and to, of course, the government agencies that pay the doctors. Well, those clearing houses are old fashioned as far as we're concerned, aren't they, Eric? Yeah, I mean, you still gotta have a clearing house, but what you're seeing here is this server-based system, clearing house, and then insurance companies. And folks, here we are in this whole COVID pandemic, not all doctors can get to their servers at the office. So what does that leave them? Well, they need a, a cloud-based system like ours because with this, they can access all of their client database. Uh, they can actually see their clients online and utilize the EMR system right directly from our platform. Yeah, and, and since it's all cloud-based, that literally means that you log in from any device that's connected to the internet. I mean, you could do this on an iPad, I guess, if you wanted to, it'd be a little awkward, but uh, a laptop, you could go buy a brand new laptop right now, if you could get in any store to buy one and then take it to uh, any place that has a, an internet connection, a Wi-Fi connection. It, Starbucks or McDonald's, and you could literally log into our system and start running your business from there, folks, without ever having downloaded one single piece of software. Nothing resides on your computer. And that's a good thing from HIPAA standpoint, isn't it, Eric? That's correct. And you can see here that inside of our platform here, it already, again, has its own clearinghouse, which allows you to get those claims directly out to the insurance companies. Now, Let's talk about this real quickly because Eric's got a great question here. Uh, he's saying, uh, Patrick, I've recently been researching some medical billing for his wife's mental health pra private practice. So she's in mental health. And we were looking for a one-stop shop for billing, scheduling notes, et cetera. Uh, he says, number one, ABS did not come up with an option during my search. The two top companies I spoke with were Advanced MD and Curio. How does your platform compare? Thank you. So Great uh, let's question. talk about that. Yeah. It's a very good question. Eric, uh, the reason we didn't come up is because we don't want to come up. You see, <laughs> one of the reasons that you want to license uh, your business, remember, we're, we're selling a business opportunity package. It's kind of like a franchise, but has some real advantages over that in that you're just licensing our system, including the software. And, and how to market to doctors. All of that's a part of our package, Eric. And so if you're searching, if a doctor is searching, they're not gonna find us, we hope. They don't wanna know about American business systems because we're not in the medical billing business. What we do is sell a package to people like yourself, and we've done this for 26 years, that, that basically puts you into business using our private label software. Now. I started to say, Eric, that, that illustration is a little deceptive. It shows the carrying house there kind of superimposed inside of our iClaim software. But folks, that's because uh, many, many years ago, over 20 years ago, two doctors developed the software that we license uh, to you. And that software is private labeled iClaim along with the e EMRX that you see there on the iPad to the left. That's the electronic medical record system that the doctor uses on their iPad. So this is all private labeled, Eric, so that, no, you wouldn't find it out there. You, you just probably wouldn't. Now, if you did, it'd probably be because there was some other licensee out there that had used our software in you know, their website or something like that, and that might come up. But the point is that if you're looking for medical billing for your wife's own mental health private practice, believe me, there's software out there that's a lot a lot cheaper than buying our licensed business opportunity package. We're kind of like a franchise. So we have a fee of about $28,000 that includes all the marketing training, all the materials, the marketing materials, lifetime support, and of course, all of the software that, that we're talking about here today. So that, that's why you didn't find it out there. Yeah. And, and those other two companies that you mentioned, they're decent companies. But if you want some flexibility of what you're going to be needing for uh billing and obviously the ehr the 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 practice management side of it so here's my recommendation for you eric get back with the person that invited you to the webinar today and ask them to give you a live demonstration yes it'll prove that that you're going to really be able to dig into you know comparison of, of advanced md and Cario and any other systems that might be out there that you want to take a look at and 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 so give it a shot just 
get back with the person who invited you, let them do a live demonstration, ask them any of the questions, and I think that, that'll be a, a big help for you there. Sure. So for a lot of people, Patrick, a lot of people don't even know what we're talking about, about a clearinghouse. So let's kind of talk about that because remember, this whole first section here is the first mistake a lot of people make when they're trying to figure out because they 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 try to get the cart cart before the horse. They try to go, you know, research clearing houses and what all that is. Again, this is all a package. It's already built in. It's already there. You don't necessarily go need to research that. We've done that heavy lifting for you. However, our clearing house gives you a direct portal directly to the insurance companies, as we demonstrated to you just earlier. Again, for those that don't have any background in medical billing. What a clearinghouse does, it catches errors, it, it makes sure that the claim is formatted properly, that whenever it gets to the insurance companies, they're going to accept it. And then with this, this provides you a very unique different, uh, difference in the marketplace simply because of the lower rejections and the expedited reimbursements. So Patrick, that's what a doctor wants to hear, lower reimbursements and more money coming in. That's all that counts in their minds. And, and folks, we're saying that this is unique because as far as we know, we're the only company that has the clearinghouse function built into the system itself. Again, the software that we uh, uh, licensed to you was at one time a, a clearinghouse software. And then it developed into the fact that it can now actually process the claims. So that's pretty unique. Uh, in, a, in a normal situation, if you had your own medical billing company and you install some software that you know came on a CD back into your computer, uh, if you even have a CD player nowadays, uh, you go into this computer, you, you create the claims, and then you connect through the internet to a clearinghouse. That's a third-party company that does that scrubbing that I talked to you about earlier. In our case, we don't do that. It tells right. you right on the screen if it's ready to submit because once it submits to our through our clearinghouse that's built in, it goes right to the insurance carrier, and that's why, like Eric said, our our rejection rate is much much uh, less than a, a typical uh, software would have. Well, you know, you know, mistake number one kind of leads into mistake number two because you started talking about CDs, DVDs, you know, all all of that. And it's really about choosing the correct technology again. You know, obviously, yeah. kind of the old Windows-based technology. And you know what, Patrick? For some people, this is working just fine for them. You know, I, sure. You know, for 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 you know people who like this kind of a setup. I mean, obviously, it works well, but it doesn't work better. Well, and the problem with server-based, of course, is that that software has to be constantly updated. So you're downloading patches and updates, reinstalling the software. You got to make sure it's installed the same on your computer, on the doctor's computer. I mean, again, server-based, it all has to be connected together. And, of course, there's always uh, uh, new medical codes that come out on a regular basis. We just had the ICD-10 codes come out a year or so ago. And that was a complete overhaul. Well, with server-based, you got to get a CD, put it in your drive, install it back on your computer, and hope that it stays current. Not with ours. Every time you log in, since it's cloud-based, it's always up to date. We make sure of that behind the scenes. You bet. And Eric, talk to them about how dangerous that is for patient data to be stored on there. Yeah, I'm telling you, if if you're if you're with, with, with server-based software, you always have that tendency for patient data start to reside actually on your hardware, and you don't ever want that because number one, um, let's just talk about if your computer crashes, um, you know what's going to happen with that. Then you'd have to take that to a shop, and now what you're doing now you're taking your whole computer now with possible patient data on there to a shop. And now you've already breached a HIPAA violation, right? You know, or your your computer gets stolen, so you don't want to have any patient data residing on your computer. And right. with, with the systems that we're kind of just demonstrating to you right now, that's what happens. I mean, you've got patient data, actually names and birthdays, and what's wrong with these people with diagnoses. That all a lot of that 
just gets stored on the server and a lot of times without you even knowing it it gets stored on the computer you're, that you're working on itself so now, now, eric i mentioned just a moment ago uh this this slide illustrates what i mentioned that there are server-based software that what you do is you install a piece of that software a version of it on the doctor office computer and then you install it on your computer of course and then you have a third piece of software in between something called a hl7 link software yeah. that yeah. links the two together and uh eric these this this system that you're looking at here is currently being sold as an integrated system and as you can see it's the the billing software there at the left and then the linking software in the middle and then the bottom right is their electronic health record system and as you can see it's not even written by the same company they don't even look alike well that's because they're not written by the same company it's a third party software that they have just basically plugged into theirs to make it work it's right. very awkward constant updates constant problems and if you call them and tell them that you're having a problem, believe me, they'll blame it on uh, Microsoft, uh, Windows, uh, and, and the doctor's computer. And there's all kinds of uh, passing the buck that goes on with that kind of software. So do your research, folks. do your diligence carefully about that and compare that to a 100% fully cloud-based software. And Eric, we don't even have time. I think we have another slide that kind of shows this. But it, it shows the fact that we also have a patient portal that we haven't even mentioned that's all connected. Yeah. And so yeah. cloud-based means, folks, that there's servers that we have located in various parts of the United States, by the way. They're redundant, meaning uh, if, you, if you update something on one, the other one's updated within seconds. And that's because if one of them goes down, if there's an earthquake or a bomb or whatever, or it just crashes, the other one kicks in and you, as the user, has, haven't lost a thing. And of course, they're yeah. all backed up uh, nightly as well. And and then again, you know, people are always asking you, are you certified? You know, how do how do we know that you you are in this industry correctly? I mean, this is just some of the associations and being what's who we're recognized by with this particular software. So again, what I'm going to do again, recommend to you if you haven't seen a demonstration of the software. Get with the person that invites you, take a look at it. I think you're gonna find, I think you might be very impressed by it. Uh, yeah. Whether you're in the industry or whether you're just now getting into the industry, I, I think that's gonna be a great help for you because again, there's not, nothing here that you're gonna find a lot on other systems, especially server-based systems where you've got your practice management, your EMR system, your clearinghouse, and your patient portal all together in one one-stop shop as what Eric was looking for uh, from a while ago. Yeah, it's not it's not different software from different companies, different programmers. Uh, this is all integrated and written by the same, uh, you know, technology company. Uh, by the way, uh, we also have the latest technology, Eric, which is really big right now because of the uh, virus thing going around, and that's telehealth. Yeah, telehealth, folks, again, we're going to mention this again here in just a moment, but uh, I'm sure most of you have already experienced somewhat of some telehealth, but it's even branching out even further into what is known as virtual care. We'll talk about that a little bit today. But again, with some of the other servers, the, the, the other uh, offerings that are out there, you're just not going to be able to find... Um, a total solution of, of what we have here. Now, again, we're not trying to sell you on the software. We're just trying to tell you what doctors are looking for, Patrick. I mean, doctors are not, they don't want to piecemeal stuff together. Um, and, and, and so many doctors are, are, are on, you know, they some are on Microsoft platforms, some are on Mac type of Apple type platforms. And boy, try to get a somewhat of a, a a CD to work on a Mac, you're just not going to be able to find that. We're we're right. across the board. We can be on any platform you want to be on. Yeah, for example, this company is claiming that they have a cloud. What they mean is that they've set the software up on their computer servers, uh, and then you can just connect to it and and use that. That's not the same as having a true cloud-based system. Right. Uh, you're just connecting through something like. Uh, P2 
PC Direct or some of those other third-party softwares that let you play like you're connected through a cloud. And then you can set up your own cloud. It says, well, that means you've got to buy a server that's again sitting in your office and install the software on that and then connect to that and have the doctor connect to that as well. Yeah. Again, folks, it's too, uh, like in Texas, we say it's, it's, it's like using bubble gum and bailing wire. Right. To put it yeah, and and Eric, before we before we pop off of here, he's got a he's got another question here. He says, first of all, thanks for the clarification. He says, I agree that ABS would be would not show up, but curious why no ABS licensee business came up. Uh, and again, you know, when we when you get into the marketing side of this, it'll make a ton of sense for you because we don't want ABS to show up at all. Remember, we're not actually in software sales like advanced MD is and what Cario is, that's just who they are. They are just software. They're not a medical billing franchise slash business opportunity like we are. So you don't really don't want your doctors, your potential doctors, knowing that you are, you know, uh, again, I'm gonna just use this as a, tech, uh, a, a term, a franchise of something like American Business Systems. Right. And so, that's what we do. We protect that. So ABS is not going to show up anywhere, but we're going to show you how you do market yourself to where you are found. So that's, that's all of the marketing. Patrick, mistake number three, no support network. Boy, how important is it, folks, that once you've started the business like this, you not only have support for the software, but you've got support in many, many other ways as well. So sure. let's start with the, our support team. Folks, we have people literally all over the country. We're a virtual company ourselves. Uh, Eric is from his home right now. I'm working from my home. But we've been doing this now, remember, for 26 years. However, we have technology partners all over the United States that help our licensees specifically when they have some kind of technical problem. So it's lifetime support that we have. Uh, you don't pay for it every year or every two years. It's forever. As long as you're an ABS licensee using our system, we're going to support you. That's right. just a part of what we, uh, you know, that license fee covers. And it's not just the technical stuff either. We've got coaches and trainers all over the country, again, that are a part of our network who can help you with any problems that you have. Eric, we've had licensees run into a particular type of a specialty doctor and they go, well, uh, hey, I don't know how to do this. Do I have anything that I need to know special? especially about a, uh, you know, um, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> cardiologist, for example. And we go, yes, of course, we have licensees who've been billing for cardiologists for many, many years, and we pay those licensees to coach new licensees. So that's the great part about being, a, we're the nation's largest network of yes. independent medical billing companies, and we've got people who can help you uh, no matter what. And, and Patrick, again, just the longevity of, some of the people that have been with American Business Systems have been with ABS for 15, 20 years already. And, and so you got a lot of longevity of experience. Uh, you know, you combine that with some of the newer licensees that have gotten new doctors and, you know, it's always branching out. And, and there may be somebody close to you that might be able to help work with you. If not, obviously, we're 100% virtual. So it really doesn't matter where you are. We're, we're able to help you. Our licensees are here to help you. Uh, but then again, even outside of that, we have our own licensee support site. And that support site has a ton of education, marketing material, and we're always adding new information and new services to this constantly. Right. In fact, folks, we're the only company, again, that does training for people to start their own medical billing business that has a licensee support website. Right. If you go to this website, you can't get in there right now because you're not a licensee, so you don't have the login credentials. But uh, Eric, I think that's a live link there. If you want to, I don't know if you know your login to uh, the LSS, but uh, that'll go straight to that live. And uh, we'll show you that basically it has new materials being posted on that weekly. Folks, we've been doing this for, uh, well, we've had that site for 14 years now. So you can imagine how much training materials uh, previous webinars, previous uh, slide decks and documents and things that are on this site. Well, there you go. 
there, kind of scroll down there, look on the right hand side there, if you can see that folks, it's kind of tiny there, but you'll see that that goes back to, uh, I think it's October of uh, 2014 or something, way, way back. Yep. So everything we've ever posted on there is here. And you can even see some of the recent posts there that they're there within the last week or so. Some Absolutely. of them, many, many posts during the week's time. This is a wonderful resource. Eric kind of browse through the menus up at the top there just to let people see the, the wealth of information that's here. This is important, folks. You need lots and lots of support uh, data for your business in marketing, uh, in uh, all the services that you're going to offer, in all the billing in detail, more medical billing in detail. Detail. Ton of stuff there. I, I don't know what I'm doing there. I don't know what I'm doing there. Oh, that's my own voice feeding back to me, Eric. I don't know if that's through your phone or what's. Well, it stopped. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I, I didn't hear. I didn't hear any feedback there. But let me okay. switch on back over to uh, to to the the, uh, the 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 PowerPoint here, and then uh, let's keep moving on because again, we've got our own licensee uh, Facebook page that again that it, it it's an internal only. You know, just for licensees and Patrick, things are being posted there all the time. Questions are being asked. Questions are being answered. People are supporting one another. It's it's wonderful. Uh, we just added this this past year, folks. But it's a private group on Facebook that you could only find uh, and sign up with, of course, if you're a licensee. We give you grant your permission to be a part of it, and then you've got all the other licensees that are on this uh, site as a part of it, all of them can be a part of it, and you can uh, interact with them, ask questions, uh, 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 tell them your success stories. It's just, it's a great place to uh, to grow as a business owner. Remember, they're not in competition with you because they're probably in a different part of the country anyway. Even if they're local, Eric, we've got some licensees, there's you know two in one particular location, but they never ever run across one another because, well, the market's just too big. And then we've got this thing called Murma. Now, what you're, and this is kind of going to go back over to Eric. And Eric, you've got to understand that we're creating, and, and Murma has been created for as your real marketing piece. Now, let me let me express, let me let you know what that means. Uh, recently, and and again in another two to three weeks for our licensees, we're going to do some webinars that are going to be targeting directly for your doctors. So you wouldn't want American Business Systems uh, webinar with, you know, with our logo and everything all over it, just so that the doctors go back and go, oh, this guy really doesn't know billing or, you know, probably just getting into billing. I'm not going to touch them. Murma out there, on the other hand, has been out there for quite a while. And then Murma is the one that produces and broadcast these webinars on telehealth, on uh, revenue cycle management issues, on HIPAA issues. And so we're doing all these different webinars for you that you get to invite your doctor to. So instead of you having to do a webinar, we're actually doing it in through Murma. So you're going to find and see this more and more like you would see BC Advantage or BC Coding Magazine or anything else out there. This is continually growing, getting more established. That's what's going to be helpful for you. Yeah, I just put the link to Murma. It's murma.org if you're searching for it. Read more about that. Look at our national uh, advisory board. The people who helped us start this organization are just leaders in the industry, folks. Yep. And it gives you great credibility. Now, uh, Eric, I'm going to address specifically, since we just mentioned Facebook, the fact that if you're worried about how to market your medical billing company that you're thinking about starting, believe me, we are the experts in that. In 26 years, we've learned what to do, and uh, Eric, we've learned what not to do, haven't we? Yes. <laughs> so uh, that's in an, an in-depth webinar that we've done on how to actually market to doctors. And I'll just give you a hint. One of the things we do is we partner you with a medical doctor. Yes, Dr. Vicki Ragnar, uh, we'll talk more about her book here in just a second, but she is going to partner with you to give you such credibility uh, that you would never have, uh, you know, out on your own, Eric. 
Well, folks, uh, we, we're going to tell you that we have actually 11 mistakes here that you could possibly make. There's more, but we're only number four, so we better speed up just a tad here. <laughs> so mistake number four, failure to ask about ongoing costs. Patrick, what does this all mean? Well, look at the hidden fees that you can run into. Be sure and ask any company or franchise that you're looking into, uh, what, what am I going to pay on a regular basis for software updates? I mean, that happens regularly in all software. And there are companies out there that say, oh, well, the first year it's free, but after that, you know, it's yeah. another $1,000 every time you have to upgrade to our latest version. That's how they make their ongoing money. Then their support only lasts for a year or two. Ours used to be limited, as you know, Eric, to a year. And I thought, well, look, as long as we're making money on the back end of all the processing that's done by these people through our system, why wouldn't we support them forever? So. We, we changed it a few years back to unlimited lifetime support. Right. There's training, ongoing training. Folks, we don't charge anything for that. And Eric, we do those, what, every other week or so, at least for our licensees. We do those on Friday usually, but they're all recorded. They're all, all posted on that site that we just saw, the support site. So you can go back and watch them anytime you want to. There's, we have literally hundreds of hours of previous training on there, and we'll continue to do that training, again, at no cost to our licensees. Medical codes, Eric, talk about the fact that those change. Yeah, those medical codes change pretty often. And, you know, again, you don't have to pay for that. You know, it kind of goes back to what we mentioned earlier about having, you know, updates and upgrades for CDs and you have to pay for that. Or as we can see here, extra people for seats, you know, licensing seats inside of the software. There's none for us. There's no clearinghouse fees because again, that clearinghouse is already built in there. And then again, any new services. So folks, uh, why don't you, before we get off this, Patrick, talk a little bit about how with all the different services, since there's no ongoing fees with American business systems, there's just a one-time fee with us, how ABS continues to make money. And then we'll move on to the next uh, slide here. Okay, that's a good question, Eric. Uh, every every service that we offer, and folks, there's another eight I think it's eight. We just added telehealth, didn't we, Eric? So uh, as a separate standalone service. So all those services are optional. You don't have to offer them, but if you do, you charge fees for those. And some of those fees are on the back end paid to us from the companies that actually provide the services for you. I know that's kind of convoluted, but again, get back with the person who invited you to this and ask them about that. It's ongoing revenue for our company. And uh, that means that we don't have to charge you any support fees. You never pay right. us another penny uh, directly to ABS. That's right. Mistake number five is outdated marketing methods and materials. And Patrick, this is probably what will get everybody in trouble pretty quickly because whenever it comes to marketing, especially with methods, it always is changing. And, and if you don't have the up, new updated material, or looks and feel of it, you know, I mean, just take a look at what we do here with American Business Systems with our our webs, I mean, our uh, our webinar slides that we that we have. I mean, it it's up, fresh, looks good, and that's the same thing that we do with our stuff for you. But Patrick, I mean, some others uh, companies is a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a book out there on Amazon that you can order. I I blotted out the title because this is one of our competitors that, that published the book. But just to show you how un outdated some people are on, on these marketing ideas, I think this company probably, uh, well, I know they do their own medical billing. They actually compete with their own licensees, but they've also been doing it so many, many years that some of the methods that they have, they probably worked back in the 80s, Eric, but now uh, they, they teach you to send out letters to doctors you know, hi, I'm a new medical biller. Do you need any help? Uh, folks, that might have worked in the 80s. I tried it back when my wife and I were doing medical billing in the early 90s, and I, I never got any response from that at all from the doctors. They, they actually teach you to use a billboard. They say, go big and, and sign up, uh, get a billboard. Like doctors drive down the road looking at billboards saying, oh, hey, I need to get some medical billing done. Uh, <laughs> Fax campaigns, Eric, you can get into serious trouble sending out faxes, you know, the blast, fax blasts, yeah. they teach that. They talk about yellow page ads. My goodness, how long have yellow pages been gone uh, from a physical standpoint? 
And then even phone calling, they, they teach you to get on the phone and just call doctor's offices. Nobody wants to do that. Folks, our medical uh, marketing is based on all the different uh, nice, professionally designed, full color, slick uh, marketing materials. We have postcards as well as these flyers. Uh, and then of course we have our own books, which we're gonna talk about here at, at another point. But the point is folks, that there are companies who are teaching you outdated marketing and uh, Eric, I mean, the guest on here today, Eric F, Eric F, believe me, you would be very careful about going with a company that has outdated marketing materials. There's not a whole lot of companies, first of all, Eric, that do what we do, at least as long as we've done it, that is teach people how to start a business, not just how to use software uh, for building, but actually how to get, get business. And so very important that you get the latest stuff. All right, uh, mistake number six, offering only one product or service. And, and Patrick, this is where it, for us, it just gets fun because we get to update our services anytime that we see something new. Since we're not ne necessarily the software company, we actually have software companies coming to us and saying, hey, right. you've got something that you might want to offer your group of people. So yeah. that's what's the beauty about us. First of all, being around for 26 years, having the, the longevity, having the number of folks that are medical billers in American business systems, we don't even have to go. We used to, Patrick, we used to have to go find software companies, maybe, hey, we're trying to look for something. Now software companies are coming to us because they see this as a quick win for them. Yeah, now all of these services are discussed in other webinars we've done and on our website, absystems.com, that you see there at the bottom of the screen. So if, if some of this doesn't make any sense, believe me, all of these are things that doctors could use that would help with their revenue, either help yeah. them keep revenue and not lose money or to actually make money. Uh, so again, all of these are just things that you can offer to doctors. Uh, we make money, you make money, and that keeps us all in business for a long, long time. Probably, uh, well, hopefully another 26 years at least. Exactly. And folks, all of these services that come along with this and the, again, all the marketing campaign that comes with this is, is second to none, folks. And, and it, again, you can get a sample of any of this. Again, just ask your ABS rep for samples. We've got some PDFs that we could possibly send to you to, to, for you to kind of take a look at if you want to look at it a little bit more closely. Uh, but folks, again, this is, this is some, um, you, you need to have some diversity obviously when you're out there marketing and again jed we're gonna i, I see your questions there i'm, I'm gonna hold off on your questions because i think it's a great way to kind of wrap up on some things this afternoon patrick what about dream stealers this whole mistake seven of listening to people that are the kind of the, the naysayers out there well first of all if it's uh, a relative they're gonna say look stop 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 no you don't want to get into this business uh, you know, maybe because of the pandemic right now, which we're going to address here. Uh, I see uh, uh, Uday asking that question. But the point is, folks, none of your relatives want you to be successful. You know why? Because if you're more successful than they are, that makes them look less successful. Or another word for that is a loser. <laughs> you're, you're a loser. So the point is, don't take what other people, even your close relatives, say. Uh, you need to read my book which I just happen to have a copy of it right here, Eric. Yeah, how to reprogram yourself for success. This is the latest version of it. You can find it on uh, Amazon, but folks, you can get a copy of this by getting back with the person who invited you to this webinar. Just say, Patrick said I could get a copy of his uh, reprogram yourself book. If you say that to them, they'll send you a PDF of this. You don't have to buy it that way, but we're gonna send you a, a physical copy of it, of course, when you sign up. And we're gonna give you some actual things to say uh, on a regular basis to yourself to help you reprogram your brain. So again, if you're listening to the dream stealers, folks, you'll never start your own business. You'll stay right where you're at. And as the old saying goes, uh, that's how you continue to get what you have been getting by just yeah. doing what you've been doing. <laughs> All right, number eight, ignoring the windows of opportunity. Now, this does go with and, and again, Jed, we see your, your questions. We're going to kind of skip yours again, but we're going to get back to it. But Ute's asking the question, is it reasonable to uh, forecast this pandemic, how 
uh, has created a, a cascade of hospitals not renewing contracts with physicians due to lost revenues, therefore leaving physicians to consider up opening own practices, joining large practices. Okay, that's all good and dandy. But again, there's still we still need private practices, and there are going to still remain private practices out there. The only reason that private practices are not out there anymore is because they're losing their shirts on revenue. Right. So, Patrick, I know we've talked about this before. This is not going away, and this is going to kind of lead into this whole window of opportunity of where we are with COVID, obviously where we are with some of our other technology. Let's kind of talk about this real quickly. Yeah, folks, we were not only ready for something like this pandemic, in that we teach our licensees how to market in ways that have nothing to do with personal eyeball to eyeball, knee to knee contact. There's a whole world of social network marketing out there that we teach our licensees how to connect. And of course, as you know, baby boomers, which Eric and I fit into that category, I think 1946 to 1964, if you were born during that period, you're a baby boomer, which means you're getting off in age, uh, parts, are not working as they used to work. And so you go to the doctor more often, right, Eric? That's correct. <laughs> Thank and you. As you go to the doctor more, of course, that means even more visits uh, for the doctor, more claims that you'll be processing. It's just the ideal time, folks. Believe me, even though it's slowed down a little bit for doctors, patients don't want to go into the doctor's office, at least for elective type stuff, that's going to eventually here, it, it, we're already seeing it grow. And as it right. does, of course, uh, Uday, you're, you're right. Uh, those doctors that are working for hospitals, they're getting laid off right now. Well, guess what they're thinking? I might as well go back into private practice. Eric, I did an interview just a couple of weeks ago with a, a young fellow who uh, used one of our marketing books that, that we'll talk about here in a moment. And he got meetings set up with doctors virtually, you know, yes. using technology like we're using right here. Uh, exactly. Zoom or GoToMeeting can be used to, to meet with people. You never have to leave your home, folks. He did meet with one doctor, Eric. The doctor said, hey, why don't you come in on Saturday? Uh, we're closed, but there's no patients. I'll meet you there. And they wore masks, you know, and kept distance from one another. But they had a meeting, and he signed him up. So it is happening. Uh, folks, don't put this off. If you're starting a business, healthcare, computers, uh, medical, uh, this is the time that you should be in. And in fact, we've got a book here that Eric's showing. You can get this on Amazon. It's published by Entrepreneur Magazine. I put a copy of the magazine there to the left of it, just in case you haven't heard of an entrepreneur. They've been on the newsstands now for 50 years, and they have a book called Start Your Own Medical Claims Billing Service. Well, look what they say in that book. Here's a quote from that. The market for medical claims billers is growing exponentially with legions of providers, that's doctors, and an ever-expanding patient pool. Healthcare industry spending is expected to grow by 5.8% each year through 2024. Now, Eric, a growth of any industry in today's world at 5.8% is huge. Exactly. Yeah. And again, it keeps growing, and we're talking money in the trillions. Again, Patrick, this is, you talk about a window of opportunity. And again, don't let the pandemic scare you off too terribly much because. You got to go see these articles that are out there that the telehealth boom amid COVID-19, virtual care is here to stay. Folks, this this has actually created, in from an entrepreneur standpoint, a disruption in the market. And when you have a disruption in the market, there are new opportunities out there that are exploding right now. And we just do not have the time for the rest of this webinar to go into what we're doing for our licensees and what our licensees are doing for doctors and new potential doctors. There's revenue streams, brand new opportunity revenue streams for our licensees. And if there's revenue streams for our licensees, there are brand new revenue streams for doctors outside of just the what you would consider the traditional medical billing revenue streams. So Patrick, what it, 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 it amazes me. Since I've been with you for going 12 and a half years, it's just amazing of what, um, that it, it's almost amazing that we're still here. But 
<laughs> well, yeah. well, that quote that we just saw was saying that, that um, medical healthcare spending was is 19.6% of the gross domestic product. That's 20% yeah. almost of the entire GDP of the United States. So Eric, there, there couldn't be a better industry to get into. And, and we also did a webinar, what was that last week that we talked about uh, some of the other companies that during downturns uh, yes. in the economy ha had started right in those crisis periods. So folks, opportunity is always hidden within a crisis anywhere in the United States. Economically, uh, this is one of those, uh, look, we're, we're selling, uh, I, I, call, I, I consider it just selling, uh, you know, popsicles to people in the Sahara Desert. That'd be pretty easy to do, wouldn't it, Eric? Right. And that's what our licensees are doing. They're offering revenue, increases in revenue for a doctor. That's like selling money. Could you sell uh, $5 bills uh, for a dollar? Uh, probably. And yet, there's really no selling here, Eric. We just tell them what we can do for them, run some reports that shows them that in black and white, and they just sign up, don't they? <laughs> that's, a, that's exactly right. And, and to Ute's point here, and with what's going on with telehealth and virtual care, we've got economic models already that are built showing that if the doctor can add telehealth and virtual care to their what they're already doing, uh, it could increase the revenue, almost double their revenue right now of what they're doing with just their regular office visits. Yes. It's incredible. Wait till you see some of the numbers. This telehealth, Eric, could be a separate business opportunity in and right. of itself. We've had telehealth built into our platform now for the last 10 years at least. Now we offer it as a standalone. The doctor doesn't even have to sign up with you for uh, the billing. And they can make, like Eric said, a lot of money just from using telehealth and using virtual visits for uh, chronic care and patient monitoring. So I wish we had time to go into that in detail, but we've done other webinars. Hey, I do want to address Jed. Jed is a CPA, he says. And yep. yes, Jed, we've had other CPAs add this medical billing as a service because you're doing, you know, a professional uh, billing and, and professional services for other businesses. Why not offer it to doctors and actually do their billing for them? Uh, and he also asks if uh, what kind of budget for initial marketing for the six first six months, for example, and then ongoing. Well, first of all, Jed, if you do it the way we teach you, you're gonna get most of your new clients from referrals. You, you'll, you'll be amazed at how many doctors, if you're doing a good job, will refer you to other doctors that they know, and your business just grows organically. But for a lot of people, uh, the 2,000 pieces of uh, marketing materials that we include uh, is all they need to get their first client. If you right. need more, of course, you can order those, and books that we provide for you and so forth. All of that, of course, you can reorder as you need to. So, Jed, that's one of the reasons why our license fee is where it's at. It's under 30,000, it's 28,000, basically 27,990, and uh, that's close enough to 28. That leaves a couple of thousand. I tell people, look, think of it as a $30,000 investment. If you yep. have another thousand, uh, wonderful. You can probably market for six months easily. If you've got another thousand, then you, you, you can market for a year without ever worrying about running out of funds. However, having said that, we teach you a dozen different ways to market and many of them, you don't spend any money at all. All right, let's move on. Uh, yep. Ms. Number 19, limiting your clientele and your marketing territory. And Patrick, we don't limit you to anything. Um, I mean, you can live in Texas and have clients in Illinois or be in California and have clients in Florida. It just doesn't matter. Uh, folks, I've, been, I've interviewed over 150 licensees over the years. Uh, you can see all of those on our, uh, our YouTube channel. We'll show you that here in a second. But the point is that you can listen to some of those interviews and you'll hear them say, I've got clients all over the United States and I've, I've, not, I've never met most of them. And the reason for that is because it's all cloud-based and everything can be done over the internet. If it's a referral from a doctor, let's say you live in California and the doctor has a, another friend in New York, he can refer you to that doctor in New York and you'll never have to fly up there and see him. It can all be done digitally, paperlessly over the internet to sign that new doctor up. So 
Yeah, it's unlimited. And that's one of the advantages of not being a franchise, by the way. Franchises, they give you a, you know, they draw a circle around a map of uh, your city and say, okay, you can only market here. You don't want that with this business. Besides, look yeah. at all the different specialties you can sign up for. Eric, that's ridiculously small, isn't it? I, I tried to just get as many on there as I could. So folks, download the printout of these slides over there in the handout section, uh, and you can zoom in and see what those are. But I'm trying to point out there, Eric, that there's there's potential clients everywhere. They can bill for all there of are. these. Things. There are potential clients everywhere. All right, uh, we got a couple of more. Mistake number 10, under undercharging and underestimating the profit potential. Patrick, let's talk about that. Yeah, look, we did a webinar recently where we took and showed that the potential earnings for a doctor, uh, I mean, for a licensee, uh, could be $117,000 a year. I think, Eric, is that based on like just three doctors, I think? Three doctors, yep. Yeah. And so the point is, folks, that you should go back and watch a previous webinar where we talk about how much money can you make. I think that was last week when we talked about six-figure incomes. Yeah. And if you offer some of the other services, in addition to the iClaim service, which is the, the billing, look at all those other services that you could offer to doctors and get that income way on up there. Eric, we did one for 10 doctors, I think, and it wasn't it over almost 400000 a year. Oh, yeah, it's right. I put, I put that one up there, too. You know, you Good. got $390,000 right there with 10 doctors. Yep. So, folks, the potential earning is uh, if you if you make the mistake of uh, getting into a business that doesn't have an unlimited, literally yeah. unlimited income. Doc, we have licensees, Eric, that have 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 doctors that they're doing billing for. And this was just based on 10. So do the math, folks. Yes, there are licensees who are doing seven-figure revenue in this business. Yeah. And if you think about the license fee, shouldn't that be higher, Eric? I was just about to talk about the license fees. That's, you know, the license fee is under three thirty thousand dollars And what you could be making on an annual basis is 10 times that. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're, yeah. <laughs> now, again, here, here's the disclaimer. Not everybody makes that kind of money, folks. It's just like sure. watching a, an ad on TV, you know, for weight loss. You know, not yeah. everybody loses 460 pounds. <laughs> and some of our last seats make less than that. But, Eric, we've got some that are making a whole lot more than that, too. So, okay. Yeah. Number 11. Yeah, last one here. Uh, and it, obviously, it's just, uh, you know, it's not... 10, it's 11. <laughs> Failing to educate your clients in, about your products and your services. And the way you do that is how we teach you to market. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, I co-wrote this book with a doctor, Dr. Vicki Ragnar. I mentioned her earlier. You can see her name at the bottom there. But if you look real carefully, you'll see that you can have your name on the front cover of a book with a doctor. Now, talk about building credibility, folks. It doesn't get any better than this. We have other books, too. Here's another one uh, that uh, Dr. Vicki wrote that you, we teach you how to highlight passages in those books and then give those books to a doctor with little tabs uh, stuck there where those highlights are. Eric, the doctors, when they get that book, they go, well, I've never been given a book that has this kind of thing. That'll take you about you know three minutes to do all that for a, uh, a book. And when you give it to a doctor or mail it, in many cases, licensees just mail this out to a doctor and with a personal note, hey, take a look at this and see if I can help you. Give me a call. And they get calls from doctors. I think right now, Eric, they have a lot of time to read books. They're not seeing as many patients. Uh, and then there's the book by Dr. Ragnar called The Myth of the Rich Doctor. Oh, Eric, this gets a doctor's attention. They were taught that they were going to go to college and make lots and lots of money and they know that they're not making near what they could have. So this is another way that we educate your prospects using the most credible thing you can have, which is a book with your name on the cover of it. Patrick, as we kind of wrap up here, I, I guess we could even close out with one more mistake that people could be making on getting their new business started is going with somebody that doesn't give a 100% money back guarantee. Oh, that is a mistake. In fact, uh, Eric, I'm glad you pointed that out. 
if you're talking to anybody, I mean, any other business opportunity or franchise, it doesn't even have to be medical billing. But if they don't offer you a money back guarantee, then that should tell you a lot about what they're offering, right? We can do that because we know what we offer. We know that we've had very few, I mean, literally a handful of people over the years ask for their money back. And so we're willing to offer that. Look, folks, if you get into this business uh, with us, you go through our training, you learn all the potential uh, stuff that we can teach you to, uh, to market, all of our proprietary information, and then you still don't like what you see, you just ask for your money back. There's no, there's no weasel words in this guarantee. We'll send you a copy of the actual agreement that you'll sign with us that says you can have your money back just by asking. Absolutely. <laughs> Eric, I don't know uh, any other company that's willing to do that. If they're not, somebody should ask questions. Why? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You need you, you need to be able to be, be, be able to have a complete evaluation of what you're doing. Hey, so uh, part of our, our our visitor Eric F. He says, in the, is that 30 days after training or after signing up? It's after signing up with us, Eric, but the training can start within a, a day or two of you signing up. And you yeah, can get right. through the training easily before the 30 days are up. So you will know after going through everything whether this is the right business for you or not. And that's why we offer that. I, I don't want your money. I, I would rather you take your money back, go out and find that that popsicle stand in the Sahara Desert or whatever it is that you want to invest in and make money some other way. Right. Because unless you're making money on the back end, we, we don't make any money. Right. right. All right. So let's talk about your next steps. Obviously, uh, there is five easy steps that we've got here. Uh, one is ask for the research guide. Patrick, I don't know if you've got a copy of that, but uh, yeah. I know we looked at it once before. But uh, we can get you that. It's a downloadable research guide that has several pages in it, kind of just have you something tangible to, to look over. Uh, also, browse our YouTube channel. Uh, you can do that at youtube.com slash YABS. Go check that out. Every webinar that we've ever done, good goodness, I can't remember how long we've been doing this, but is out there. Patrick, Jim you got that? 10 years at least. You've been with us 10, 12 years, haven't you? Yep, yep. Here's that uh, research guide. This is yep. a printed copy. You're going to get it as a PDF, but look, there's over 50 pages of information in here, and it even has a picture of Eric in it, so you will want to get this for sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and if you send it over, I'll, I'll even uh, autograph that page for you, if you'd like. <laughs> for a fee. Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, the third thing down there is, is really important for you. You need to talk with other licensees. Uh, this is outside of Eric, outside of Patrick. These are those people out there. They're going to tell you the skinny on everything. They're going to tell you, you know, wh where they made mistakes, uh, where we've actually improved in a lot of things that we've been able to do. Get with your rep that you're working with so that you can get the reference list to the other ABS licensees that are out there. And I've already said it once, I'm going to say it again. If you haven't seen a live demo of the system, get with the person that invited you here and ask them to do that. And then online training, again, instead of you having to come to a classroom to sit there for five days, everything that we do now is online live training that you can just schedule that with, with our support group and they'll get you all taken care of. Yeah, folks, these uh, modules that you go through, uh, they're, they're probably uh, 12 hours of training that you go through. This is initial training, we call it, because again, yep. we have a lot of training on our licensee a support site that you'll be able to go through after the initial training. But this is with a live instructor. And by the way, we only uh, pay instructors who have already proven to us that they know how to build their business. So right. they are licensees that have been certified by us to teach you how to start your business. And of course, we pay them big bucks to do that. So if you want to become one of our instructors somewhere down the line, just get your business up and running and uh, tell us that you want to be an instructor. The point is, it's with a real human being. And you get to see those people, talk to them, ask them all the questions you want. It's just you and them. And it's based on your own schedule. So as I said earlier, if you signed up today, we got your funds, let's say, tomorrow or by the end of this week, you'd be able to start your training within 48 hours after that. And then you can set whatever schedule you and the instructor work out 
to get through that. Most of most people get through it in less than 30 days. Yeah, you bet. Patrick? We've had, we've had people complete that within two weeks. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely correct. Huh? <laughs> there you are. I actually had, it, it, my beard's gotten a little uh, lighter there. A little, a little grayer, hadn't it? Yes, since we took that picture. Yeah, update that a little bit.